Hello, and welcome to a Camp Landing Museum history video. I'm Dr. George Cressman. I serve as the Camp Landing Museum's historian. And today I'm going to be chatting with you about a, uh, an experiment that was conducted using uh, German prisoners of war during World War II. Enough rubber for our tanks. Well, Charlie, this is one of the last rubber tracks we'll get. So, in an earlier uh, video, we talked about the uh, German prisoners of war uh, compound at Camp Landing itself. And I commented in that video that there were 22 subcamps all across the state of Florida. And we're gonna be thinking specifically about uh, the, the subcamps that were down in the Lake Okeechobee area. So in 1941, as the uh, Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor launches the United States into World War II, the Japanese began moving south. And by the end of, of uh, the middle of 1942, the Japanese controlled uh, the bulk of the rubber plantations in, uh, in the uh, Pacific Theater. And so the question, of course, is where are we going to get rubber? Beginning in 1940, there was an effort to identify additional places where uh, rubber plantations could be developed within the Allied territories. The problem with that approach is that it takes many years to grow a plantation. It takes quite a while to go cultivate the, the trees necessary to produce any sizable amounts of, of um, natural latex. This is probably an eight to 10 year process, but the Allies need rubber now. In the United States, there was a very active effort to recycle rubber. This effort then leads to a search for alternative sources of, of latex. There's a plant called the Wyoli. Wyoli is a cactus-like plant, and it was actually growing wild in some of our uh, western, more arid states. Now the problem with Wyoli is it takes several years to grow into a harvestable plant. So another source of natural latex was identified and it was the Russian dandelion. The U.S. initially got seeds for Russian, Russian dandelion from the Soviet Union in exchange for uh, clothing that had been uh, donated for relief efforts in Russia at that point under attack by Nazi Germany. Russian dandelion grows, uh, grows a plant fairly quickly and the plant that it grows looks very much like the dandelions that grow in our yard. But these Russian dandelions have immense root system, much larger root system than the, the dandelions that grow in our yard. And when those roots are cut apart, they produce a natural latex. So there was an effort then to grow Russian dandelion in many different locations. And Bell Glade in Florida was selected as a uh, cultivation site. It turns out it actually grows quite well. At Bell Glade, a prisoner of war subcamp was established. And the prisoners for two years grew Russian dandelion. So the, uh, the experiments at, at Bell Glade indicated that the plant could be harvested exactly as you would harvest uh, sugar beets. And so the same harvesting uh, equipment is gathered and the whole plant is gathered. The uh, seed puffs are collected for future, uh, future growth and then the uh, the root structures all pulled off and carried off for, for uh, harvesting uh, and latex collection. So what happened at Belle Glade in the Russian dandelion experiment? 
there were plantings done in two uh, growing seasons. The plants were successfully grown and harvested fairly easily. And there was a reasonable quantity of latex that was collected. From that latex that was collected, a series of, of uh, large truck uh, tires were molded. So trucks for six fives or deuce and a half trucks, those tires were actually produced from the latex that was grown at Bell Glen. By this point, however, uh, this, is, uh, this is late 1943 now, by this point, synthetic rubber has been invented as, and is being commercially produced. So the need for natural latex, they still need natural latex, but not nearly to the extent that we needed it in 1941 and 1942. So the decision was taken to terminate the experiments at Bell Glade and the prisoners of war there moved on to other activities in Florida. Nevertheless, the experiments that have been conducted at Bell Glade attracted lots and lots of attention. In the post-war, there was a plan to begin cultivating uh, Russian dandelion on a much larger commercial scale in Florida. In fact, one of Florida's former governors put together a uh, commission to investigate how to grow uh, Russian dandelion in South Florida. Somehow they never generated a whole lot of enthusiasm for this experiment and the Russian dandelion um, uh, business in Florida went away. But some ideas absolutely never go away. Last year in 2019, the Continental Tire Company introduced a green tire manufactured from, of all things, latex from Russian dandelions. Thanks for watching another of our Camp Landing Museum history videos. For all of our wonderful folks at Camp Landing Museum, we strongly in, uh, invite you to come visit with us. Come see us, we're open every day from noon to four o'clock. For the Camp Landing Museum, this is Dr. George Grassman signing off. Thank you.